For RCR Wireless News, I'm Sean Kinney and I'm here today with Philip Sorrells, the Vice President of Portfolio Marketing for Comscope and that's the final day of Mobile World Congress 2017. Uh, Philip, I, I know you've had a chance to take a look around the show floor and talk to a lot of the people here. What really stands out to you this year? Well, first, Sean, I want to thank you for coming by to visit with us. We always enjoy the opportunity to be with our friends at RCR, so thank you for that. Uh, it is the last day, and, and um, we're always super excited when we come to Mobile World Congress. It's one of our premier events, and we have an opportunity to really tell our story very well at this event. Uh, Mobile World Congress 2017 had uh, some really interesting themes. The thing that kind of struck me the most was that um, two years ago, there was a lot of excitement and energy about the testing that had been done in the millimeter wave for for our future 5G technology and this year there was uh, there was a lot more pragmatic discussion of the practical uh, implementation of some of those technologies and some of the realization of how uh, how diff difficult it can be to take things out of a lab environment and put it into an actual ecosystem and have it used in a in the way that we visual, visualized it could be used, but being done thousands and thousands of times is somewhat different. So we had a lot of realistic discussions about how you move from that kind of theoretical implementation to the practicality of doing that. Of course, we heard a lot of great discussions about how 5G continues to evolve. We heard a lot more about the, the part of 5G, which is the network of networks part of 5G, which is really interesting because one of our key themes that we came in to talk about was uh, virtualization and what Comscope is doing to enable virtualization to actually happen in the physical layer. So that was really interesting. We got to hear a lot about that and we, we were uh, really excited to spend some time talking to some of our technology partners about how the 5G standard is evolving and what the architecture is starting to really firm up around. And uh, really uh, super excited about the, the match between our vision of our OneCell technology platform, OneCell, and how that really directly maps in to the vision and the architecture of 5G networks in the future. So, some really positive affirmations around that. We're super excited to have the opportunity now to share that with our customers around the world and uh, start to share our vision of 5G virtualization uh, through our one cell technology. So those are the main things kind of that we took away from the event. It was a busy event, lots of people, lots of traffic, a lot of energy, and uh, overall very successful 2017. Well, I'm glad to hear it and Philip you made a, a really salient point there I think it's like we've moved a little past the hype of 5G and we've really started to define the underlying technology and we've really started to dig into the use cases and now we're seeing a lot more emphasis on sort of building that bridge from LTE to gigabit LTE and then to 5G as that standard continues to evolve and I think a great example of that bridging that also speaks directly to Comscope's role in the industry is the uh, just concept of a, a small cell CRAN architecture. Mm. You get to you know look at some of these technologies that bring efficiency into your spectral usage that speak to the uh, perpetuation of fiber in the network Absolutely. and then also the virtualization like you mentioned. So share a little bit more about Comscope's role in that evolution if you would please. Sure, absolutely. Uh, well, certainly in the area of virtualization, you really have to visualize the whole network where you have not hundreds of access points, but possibly thousands and even more than that in a specific MTA. So all of those points have to be orchestrated in a way that ultimately end up with fiber. Uh, you know, you can almost visualize, I remember, you know, 20 years ago, the idea was to try to get the user as close to the cell tower as possible to get their best user experience. But now the thinking is get the handset as close, or the UE as close to a fiber point as possible because ultimately all those access points, whether they be 
a, a 4G or LTE Advanced or LTE Pro or the future 5G uh, spots, all those spots need a fiber connectivity for both front hall, back hall, uh, aggregation into clouds, all that has to happen. So one of the things that we spent quite a bit of time talking with our clients and customers this, this week was about our fiber strategy and how we're taking the, uh, the technology that Comscope acquired from our TE connectivity acquisition of the connectivity part of their business and uh, where they're serving kind of the MSO market and how we're taking that kind of technology and moving it into the mobility realm and uh, finding ways to help both those communities take advantage of that fiber network. So that's a big part of it. The other part of it is um, base brand processors, they've got to go somewhere. So where are they going to go? Well, they're going to go into, they're going to go into small cabinets. They're going to go into central offices. They're going to go into locations that look like a data center. And uh, certainly one of our big initiatives is development of ultra-dense fiber connectivity in data center type applications. And we've rolled out our latest generation of fiber technology called wideband multi-mode fiber. It's now a new standard in the industry. Ultra high speed and we're developing technology so that we can package more and more fiber connections to handle denser and denser processors. So all that is in place and beginning to become in place to kind of really be the physical layer empowerment of all the virtualization technology that's in work today. Yeah, densification really is an important trend that struck me here at the show. And um, to get back on small cells, these are a, a great way to add network density, but there's a lot of challenges. And I, I think if we were to boil it down to three, they'd be power, backhaul, and site acquisition. I know Comscope does a lot to really help their clients solve those problems. So can you maybe dig into that? Absolutely. Uh, we have been working for a uh, quite a while on all three of those. Um, on the site acquisition side, side, we're trying really to do a couple things. One, reduce the number. I mean, if instead of building 10 small cells, you could build outdoor small cells. If you could build five, uh, then that would solve a lot of problems, be a lot less site acquisition. So to do that, we're helping operators around the world develop kind of a next generation concept for cell sites where the antenna above ground is maybe 18 feet or under 20 feet and use a little bit higher power radio, more of a traditional remote radio head concept with antenna technology that provides a little bit more elegant management of the RF so that instead of needing 10 sites, you might only need five sites to get the same kind of capacity efficiency. So that's one way. The second way is just to um, solve the problem of getting zoning approvals by having a more elegant camouflaged in implementation that takes less time to do the install installation. You don't want to tie up a city sidewalk for a month. You, know, you want to be able to be there, get it installed, get out in a day or less. So those are the kinds of applications that we're working on now to help speed up the acceleration, make it easier to find sites to get approved, and have fewer sites. Well, and as you said, uh, this has been four days of just nonstop energy and excitement here at the show. So how do you take that momentum and, and bring it back and carry it on for the rest of the year? What's going to be top of mind for Comscope? Well, there's so many things. I think, I think for us, the, the key is... Um, the key is that many of the operators, even though uh, certainly the operator community are very interested in 5G and they've got lab testing going on now and we're in many lab tests now. We, we're in, involved in, a, in uh, at least three different industry-wide 5G certification programs. So we're continuously investing our own R&D along with our partners in the industry uh, on what the 5G networks of the future look like. But the reality is LTE still has a tremendous amount of opportunity for the operators to exploit. There's still a lot of capacity. Uh, LTE Advanced, LTE Pro, all those kind of LTE-based technologies have still a lot of headroom. Um, in the near term, certainly throughout 2017, probably 2018, 
maybe even beyond. Uh, we're going to continue to work on providing our operator clients ways to optimize the assets that they've already invested in in LTE. So uh, that was another key thing that we talked about it this week here is how you how we're enabling um, operators to extend the economic useful life of their existing macros of their existing small cells by doing interference mitigation filters, cleaning up the spectrum that they have, splitting sectors from three sectors to six sectors, using some uh, relatively well-known but not very well often used advanced antenna technologies like 2x4 MIMO and 4x4 MIMO and some multi-beam splitting top technologies to just ex extend the, the value of the LTE investments that are already there. So that's really where we'll have the most momentum. So we'll be doing the R&D activity here to really uh, kind of help carve out the path of how the industry moves forward along the lines of 5G, but at the same time, helping our operator community, helping our clients, helping our ecosystem uh, take advantage of what they've already got in LTE and really um, maximize the value of the investments that they already have, already have made. Well, Philip, I really appreciate you taking the time to share your perspective on the show and sharing how Comscope is really enabling their operator and enterprise customers to take on this exciting transformation. Glad to do it. Glad to be here.